Hey guys, it's Maitha. Welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be reviewing a planner that's a lot different than the planners that I usually review here on my channel. This is the Home Planner by Lori Heiss. I believe that's how you say her last name. And she's the founder of the Passionate Penny Pincher blog online. It's very, very popular. And her team was kind enough to send me this planner to review for you guys today. And this makes a lot of sense because I do talk about home management and organization on this channel a lot as well. So I really wanted to take a look at this home planner. Also, if you really like home management and organization content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I put up new videos every week on those topics and I would love to have you join the family. So let's jump into it, shall we? I have the blue and white striped version. I believe there is a geometric version and one other cover. I'm not sure, but I will obviously leave the links and everything down below in the description box. So the planner cover is seven and a half inches across and 10 inches tall. And the page size is roughly seven inches across and nine and three quarters inches tall. This planner retails for $44 and we will talk a lot more at the end of the video about the overall value of this planner. At the beginning of the planner, you have these lovely sheets of stickers. You get two, they are these gorgeous gold foil stickers. So all of these stickers coordinate with the colors of the planner. This planner is wire bound, but as you can see, the diameter of these coils is quite narrow. It doesn't take away from how, how to turn the planner, but usually when you see a wire bound planner, the coils are a lot bigger. So it makes the planner actually quite thin, which is nice. You also get these sturdy Mylar tabs in the color theme of the planner. Included with the planner, you get a bookmark to snap in so you can find your place in the planner easily. And it also has this fun colored ruler on the side. I love that this was included in the planner. I feel like not enough planners are including these. I love that they just gave it to you in the planner. So this is the cover page, the 2021 home planner, a daily checklist for your home, family, and finances. It has a section of belongs to. It then gives you a key, which is gonna be very integral to understanding the weekly layout. So this little icon here of the cutlery is plan dinner each day. This little flower wheel over here is for you to list one thing that you're thankful for. And this dollar sign here is to keep track of how much money you're spending throughout the day. This is a letter from Lori. And here are some hints and tips that she gives you for using this planner. And then here we get to the checklist at the beginning of the planner. I think these are super comprehensive and we're just gonna go through them. So this is the spring cleaning checklist. This is what you need to do for the entire house. This is what you need to do for bathrooms and bedrooms, the kitchen and other areas in your home. The yard and home maintenance checklist, so late winter, early spring, the summer, spring and fall. This is funny, this is the company is coming checklist. So what you need to do one week ahead, three days ahead, two days ahead and one day ahead. You get two of these company is coming checklists. So I'm assuming these would be reserved for like when you have people coming over who are staying with you for several days. This is the Christmas checklist. This is just kind of like a mini Christmas planner all in one. If you haven't seen my Christmas planner set up, I will link it in the cards above, but this is just one way to have it kind of all in one. Planning and baking, your Christmas card checklist, shopping, gifting, a reminder for your baking supplies, your gift wrapping supplies, remember to gift list. And this is your weekly home project list. So this is by quarter. So you have January, February, and March. It says organize your pantry, deep clean your refrigerator, and even gives you like what day to do that. We're going to go over that later in the video. Here it just Organize your pantry again, deep clean your refrigerator, organize child's closet for spring, organize child's closet for fall, etc. Christmas cards, plan holiday meals. 
So all of this is in one if you need ideas for weekly projects. And then this is your finance tracker. So this is the, I'm assuming, reoccurring bill payment schedule. So bill payments, yeah, by listing recurring expenses, including how much they cost. So they give you January through December, your bill, the amount, and the date. So that is just a running checklist to keep at the front of your planner. You then get a place to put your home project lists. So like major projects that you wanna do in your home. And then you also get a space for your 2021 financial goals. You also get some cute note pages here. And then you get your calendar at a glance for 2021 as well as 2022. And then we jump into the planner. And so every divider has a verse from the Bible. I just want to preface before we go any further because this may be like where you check off. This planner is heavily Christian inspired. It's not very clear from the website that that is the case. So if you are looking into this planner and that is not something you're interested in, I'm just here to tell you like that this is what's in the planner. As you saw at the beginning, it had a Christmas list, very specifically Christmas. It has the verses on all of the dividers, and it also has kind of like a mini Bible reading checklist on the weekly spread as well. So if that's not something you're interested in, that is a-okay. I will catch you in another one of my videos. If it is, keep on watching, but I know that it isn't mentioned anywhere on the website, so I just wanted to mention it for you guys in this review. All right, so here is the January notes section. So it gives you here tasks to do, complete your January budget, decide one financial goal, donate or throw away 25 items, plan one fun activity for your family. So then we jump into the calendar page. This is a Sunday start, so your weekends are not together. The same colors on the monthly page as the tabs in this planner. The holidays are written on the monthly calendar as well. You do get a calendar, a mini calendar at the bottom for the next month is the monthly layout. So then we get into this super interesting weekly layout. So I'm gonna bring you guys in for this. So at the top, you get your week. And at the top of this layout, it is a horizontal layout. You have all of these checklists to, for things that I'm assuming you should be doing every day according to this planner. So you get sun Sunday through Saturday and it has everything from exercise, shower, make beds, start laundry, clean bathroom sinks, plan and prep dinner, wash, put away dishes, clean kitchen counters, wipe down kitchen sink, tidy the main living space, make dinner, prep meals, wash, put away dishes. All of this is written out for you and then you get two trackers habit trackers, I guess, for whatever you want. And then this here is a major project to do for the week or one extra project to do for the week. So here it says clear and develop device photos, but on the next week, it's something else. So on this week, it's organized pantry. On this week, it's deep clean the refrigerator. So that changes from week to week. This is also Sunday through Saturday. It echoes the monthly plan as well your weekends are not together and i know like half of you turned off this video after i said that but just had to put it out there the weekends are not together on the weekly spread either okay so here on sundays here is the checklist of what you should be doing so it has make your menu plan grocery shop clean out purse read to john one and Again, referring back to the icons that I talked about earlier, this is dinner, what you're grateful for, and how much money you spent that day. And then you have lines here to write anything else that you have to do for that day. Monday, we have dust furniture, dust light fixtures and fans, clean mirrors, vacuum house. Again, read another verse from the Bible. And so I'm just gonna go over the checklist from now on. So we have clean out fridge on Tuesday, mop hard surfaces, take out all the trash, clean microwave and stovetop. And you have clean bathrooms, change towels and bathrooms, restock toilet paper. On Thursday, it's a lighter day. It's just change bedroom sheets. Then we have Friday, clean electronic screens, sort paperwork and mail, take out all the trash. And then Saturday also is a lighter day. It's clean baseboards. 
So those are the weekly pages. And at the end of each month, we have a budget worksheet. You have a section for charity, church tithing, other don donations, savings, college fund, new car fund, housing. So this is all written out for you. Your first mortgage, your second mortgage, real estate taxes, HOA fees, repairs, utilities, medical, um, clothing, food, personal, so child care, Christmas gifts, transportation, miscellaneous, and then you get a section for a total. Then you have a section for monthly income, total expenses. And so this here, this budget really suggests that you should be zero, what is it, dollar, zero dollar budgeting or something where like everything at the end of the month should add up to zero. Like every dollar should have a place for it to go. Some people are really into that, others aren't. It's not something I personally use, but I know a lot of people do. That is the entire planner when it comes to the weekly pages and what you get inside of the planner. In the very back, you do get a double-sided paper pocket. I don't know if I mentioned the paper quality at the beginning of this video, but it is 90 pound paper. The quality of the paper is really, really nice. Here is my pen test with my Paper Mate Enjoy gel pen and some highlighters. So when the page is completely flat, I cannot see any ghosting at all whatsoever. Like it's very nice paper and it still has some grit to it. It's not overly smooth. So I do think that the paper quality on this is very, very nice. I think they nailed it. So let's go over my overall thoughts before I tell you guys who I think would really benefit from this planner. Now, as I was going through this, I realized something felt very, very different about this planner and I just couldn't put my finger on what it was until I finally realized that the function of this is a lot less planner and a lot more workbook. And that's not a negative thing, that's just like what this is supposed to be. Something that you're just that you're supposed to work through and at the end you get a final result of I'm assuming having your home more in order than when you started. Because this is like a very specific day by day layout of what you should be doing on each day. This kind of reminds me of, if you guys know the Emily Lay Planner layout, I will link my video on her review that I did a couple years ago, but nothing about the planner has changed since. I will link that in the cards. But I remember on that Sunday, she had like three items that were like what you should do on that Sunday. And it, it's like such a divisive box because people either love it or they hate it. And it drives them to like get another planner that's not that planner because they're like, I don't want, you know, any of those things filled out. So this is like that, but on steroids because there is not a single part of this planner that there's not a checklist of things that are already there that you should do. So basically the function of this is that if you were to hand this to somebody and they were to follow each one of these steps, as is, they would definitely be on track to getting their home in order. And that's what it's for because it already puts out all of these to-dos already there for you to remind you that you should be doing this and when you should do it. There's not a ton of room to like plan in this planner of other things you may need to do that may not be like cleaning related. So that's why I say that it reads much more like a workbook. So this brings me to who would really benefit from this planner and who would really love this and use it. I feel like this is definitely the tool that would be great for somebody who is lost in their home management process or feels overwhelmed or is totally new and just doesn't have any starting point to jump off of and they really need some guidance. They don't know what they should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis and they're not yet in the rhythm of what works best for them. This is definitely for you or you just need a total reset. You want to go back to the beginning because what you're doing isn't currently serving you. They just want like a for you dumb product of what do I need to do? When do I need to do it? What should I be doing? And this is that tool. So that's why I say this is an excellent tool to really establish those habits. Example, I personally already do all of these things. Like I shower every day <laughs> and all of this, like the dinner prep meals for like all of, I don't prep meals for every day on, 
for the next day every night at all but all of this and all of these like three of these items are things that I don't even write in my planner personally because this is just part of like my nighttime cleaning my kitchen routine I talk all about that in a video as well why it's really important to have like one routine that you do every day I'll link that down below as well but so this like doesn't even make it into my planner so this for me personally would be like not the best way to use my space in my planner but for someone who's not in that rhythm yet and they don't know what works best for them or they haven't established those routines like i mentioned this would be a great checklist however and i say this like with a big asterisk i would caution against the thinking that following an exact pre-made routine that's like plug and go is going to solve all of your problems because it won't i can see this getting potentially really confusing if you like to do certain things on certain days like for example like this is on january 3rd organize the pantry like it's very possible that you have other things going on on that day and you're not going to organize the pantry is it great to have a checklist that you're going to organize the pantry deep clean the refrigerator deep clean the freezer on a quarterly basis absolutely do i think it needs to be done on a certain day in my personal opinion probably not and i understand why it's set this way again it's like working through a home management workbook for example like even on the weekly pages more than the monthly pages i can see it getting potentially pretty confusing if you let's say don't grocery shop on sundays because you're a homemaker and therefore you can grocery shop any other day of the week that it's not so crowded and therefore you know grocery shopping and making a menu plan on sunday might not be when you want to do it like i said i personally do that planning on fridays so for that reason i can see it getting confusing because you're like okay well i'm gonna move this somewhere else or rewrite it in another spot so this is why i say that it's a great starting point for getting in the habit of doing all of these things and maybe changing it around crossing things off and putting them on other days of the week won't bother you and that's fantastic but i really 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 recommend for you to please go watch my video on five reasons why you can't create a routine that actually sticks because i cover so much in that video about the topic of routines and how sometimes using other people's routines isn't serving you at all because you live your life differently and those people live their life differently and therefore it's not going to work for you if you try to do everything that everybody else does just because they tell you to do it so basically what i'm trying to say without getting super long winded if you buy this planner and this exact framework doesn't work for you it's not going to help you bypass the hard work of establishing routines and really figuring out what's going to move the needle for the things that you personally want to accomplish and where you want to go. But this is an excellent starting point for people who really do need that push and really do need to get into that rhythm of getting in sync with their home and what works best for them and their family. So I do think it's an excellent tool, but I did just want to point those things out. So that gets me to whether I think you should buy the planner or not and where the value of the planner really lies so as i mentioned this planner is 44 dollars, which i think is a very fair price for this planner but something that i have never mentioned in a planner video before which i am mentioning now is that this actually comes with a facebook group and it's a facebook group for those who have bought the planner and it is a fantastic resource i joined the group i think like a week ago or something like that it's filled with incredible women who give so much support to others in their homemaking and home management journey it is a wealth of resources for amazing cleaning hacks and things about your home that you would have never know that you even needed to do and it's just like a great community of supportive women who are just cheering each other on and really using each other as like accountability partners so if that's something that you need because for a lot of us accountability partners are so important to establishing new routines and creating better habits then i highly suggest going this route because you get a planner that gives you everything and lays out pretty much everything you need to do to keep your home going and on top of it you get to be in a community of other women who also have those same goals for their home as well and they take pictures of the planner and how they're using the planner and it's very functional planning like it's just 
taxes and checks and all that stuff. So if that's something that's up your street, I definitely recommend buying it for that reason alone. However, if you like the idea of having a home checklist, but you don't want to part ways with your planner because you love your planning system and this layout here definitely isn't going to work for you. The other excellent option is that on her website, again, I will link this down below, they do sell a bundle of home checklists separately that you can print out, you can put in a separate binder, a home binder, or you can print it to size and put it in the planner that you already own. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video if you did, so I know that you like content like this because I really did enjoy filming it for you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I will talk to you in my next one. Bye, guys.